Okay, so here we have the interior of our Saturn SL2. This is a 94 Saturn SL2, and I'm going to be changing the stereo today. So here we have the inside of the car. I've opened up the hood. Before I do any of the work, any work on the electrical system of the car, I need to disconnect the black negative terminal. And while I'm doing this, I need to make sure I don't accidentally bump into the red positive terminal. Because if I do, I'll be completing a circuit and it's going to be pretty dangerous. And there it is. It's disconnected. We can just set this aside against the plastic on the battery. So the first thing you gotta do, you gotta remove this plastic trim right here. It may be a bit harder on yours. First you're gonna take out the uh, little cigarette lighter thing. It may be a bit harder on yours because it's got some plastic clips that have broken off on mine so that's why it's pretty easy to just pull off. So I'm going to go ahead and set this one aside. Now what I'm going to need to do is remove the old stereo unit. So the first thing I need to do, I have a 930 seconds. This is a standard not a metric bit right here and I have my ratchet I'm gonna put that socket onto my ratchet and so I'm gonna go ahead and take these two nuts out of here So we should go ahead and set that one aside. Doesn't get lost. Looks like my plastic shell there just broke because this thing here just broke off. That should not have happened. But this is an old, old car. Going on 22 years old this year. So this is the standard GM antenna. I got here and this is cable with all the wires coming out of the car right here this is where we're going to attach our wiring harness right under this one so the unit I bought is called the KDR370 from JVC Kenwood Corporation, made in Indonesia. So here's the unit right here. It has a aux input, the main thing I'm gonna be using. It also has for CDs right there. And it also came with this piece right here. This piece is gonna plug into the back of the unit right there. and that all came in the box for the receiver and also these little metal pieces came in the box for the receiver I ordered this all from a website called Crutchfield that throws in all the other stuff you need for the installation so it also came with this little package right here that's called the GM 87 to 2005 harness this is what's going to plug into the wires coming out of the car and it needs to be connected to this piece with some special plastic caps that enable you to splice the wires without soldering. So I'm going to go ahead and be doing that later. It also came with this General Motors antenna adapter cable, 1988 and up GM factory antenna to universal radio. So here's the universal radio on this side of it. This is going to plug into my new unit right here. And also, it came with this bunch of plastic pieces. These are going to adapt the 
receiver to fit into my car, how it should go. You know, make it a little bit bigger so that'll fit because this one's a little smaller. So we're gonna be seeing a bit of this plastic trim there. It came with these, actually four plastic pieces and some screws that I got right here. So what I'm going to be doing is hooking up this wiring harness, which is the piece I have here in my right hand. This one is sold separately or I bought everything together so it came in a separate package, but it was all part of like a, a big set. And this one is the piece that came in the package with the receiver. So what I'm going to be doing is joining the corresponding wires on each of these two pieces. I'm going to be using something called crimp caps to hook the two wires together. So I'm going to be stripping the wires on this one. And these come kind of pre-stripped, as you can see. They kind of uh, pull off right here in the, uh, the copper is there. So I'm going to strip the ones on the left-hand side and tie them into the ones on the right-hand side. So you could kind of go two ways, as you can see. So I observed the radio. So I, I'm going to have the side with all the pins and on the bottom. The one with only, I think it's four pins, will be on the top. So I'm going to lay this one down like this, and since the crimp caps are going to be going in something kind of like this, it'll it's fine that they're kind of curved in off directions, because that'll be perfect for the crimp cap. And this one should go up, the one for the stereo, the clip should go on the top side. So with the clip up and the part with only four pins up, I'm going to be joining them together now. So I'm going to start with the black wire, which is labeled ground. I'm going to go ahead and take my wire strippers. I'm going to lightly cut into here. Not so much that I cut the copper that's underneath, but just so that I cut the insulation. This one's strip. And this is a ground wire, which is a pretty important wire. So the reason they give you a kind of a longer ground wire is in case your wiring harness doesn't have ground, you're supposed to ground it to the chassis of the car. Or chassis. I'm not really sure how to say that word. Maybe it's chassis. But our wiring harness does have that on the instructions. It does say ground is black. On the stereo it says ground is black, so we do have that in this case. So what I'm going to do now is take the two wires and tie them together, kind of twist them together. And once they're twisted together, I'm going to put them into the cap right here. I'm going to just crimp this down. This is a 12 volt ignition. That's the red wire. Both my receiver manual and my wiring harness manual call this red one 12 volt ignition. So I've stripped this red one. I'm 
go ahead and tie these two red ones together now. Once they're tied up again, we take our little crimp cap. These are them, sometimes this is, they call them closed end connectors. These are crimp caps, these just come from an auto parts store. I'm pretty sure a lot of other places might sell them. Now the ground and the red ones are hooked together. This one is a 12 volt battery slash memory, the yellow wire. Let's strip the yellow one. Two yellow ones. Join them together. Drop the crimp cap on them. Okay, so there are going to be two wires that we're not going to be using. This one, steering wheel remote. The SL2 doesn't have a steering wheel remote, though maybe it's possible to put one in. We're not going to be using this one. And the brown one, which says it's for something called phone mute, which we're not going to be using. As you can see, these are covered up with these little uh, plastic things. Okay, so now I have uh, hooked all the wires for the speakers together. So generally, white goes with white, black and white goes with black and white, purple goes with purple, purple goes with purple and black, and you can check the guide on the wiring harness and the guide in the instruction booklet. Quiet. Anyways. Now I have a few more wires to deal with. The blue one is going to go to the blue and white because the blue one is power antenna and blue and white goes to Um, power antenna or the uh, amplifier. So I'm going to go ahead and strip this blue and white. This would also be if you had an extra subwoofer or something, this would also be where it draws the power. Go ahead and twist these two together. This is really where the electricity is able to flow through this uh, twisting. If you really wanted to, you could put some solder on this joint and then put the little uh, cap on there. Little wire crimp on there after it's been soldered, but it should be fine without solder. Go ahead and at this point put another wire crimp on here. I'm going to take my big pliers that have a sort of a wire cutter thing in there and crimp it on. Don't need to apply too much force just so that it's completely snug. 
and the wire crimp will also help hold the wires together so that's for the power antenna now at this point in the wiring harness I have the brown wire which I'm not going to be using which is for the phone mute and I have the blue and yellow which I'm not going to be using because this one is for the steering wheel remote there's no steering wheel remote on the LCL2 and one of the ones that was covered with one of the little plastic covers was the blue and white so I'm actually going to use that blue and white plastic cover to seal off the one extra one I have which is going to be the one called the dimmer the orange and white this part that came with the part here that came with the stereo doesn't have an orange and white just well it does have an orange and white but that one is for illumination it doesn't have one for dimming so orange and white won't be used orange will go to orange and white because these are both for illumination and the dimming one won't be doing anything I'm gonna put that little plastic thing that's left over this one over the dimming one this little plastic thing came off of the blue and white so the wiring harness what it is basically is an adapter to convert the GM wiring that went to the stock radio into something that these more generic radios that can use the aftermarket ones and since each one has different wiring instead of selling I guess different cables that go from GM to each radio they give you this wiring harness thing and you can figure it out yourself which ones go on there so it's like basically assemble your own adapter wire that's basically what it is a lot of people like doing this in the car I see them doing it in the car in their videos so that's kinda awkward I'm working inside on a table works a lot better so at this point everything's wired up the only thing I need to do is cover up this stray wire so I'm gonna pull back this insulation and put it into this little rubber piece you can also use electric tape might be a bit easier so at this point the wiring harness is completed so now what we're gonna do is put these plastic adapter pieces that make it so that our receiver can fit in the stock slot on the car make it so that it's kind of the size of the stock receiver so the first thing we're gonna do is slide on this metal piece right here this is like a stamp piece of sheet metal it comes with the receiver they call this the DIN sleeve in our instruction set so we're gonna go ahead slide this thing on it's gonna click when it locks into place then I'm going to take this next piece there's one piece that I'm actually not going to use for this particular receiver this thing kind of fits under this thing called a trim plate to make it smaller 
make a smaller opening for a different sized receiver, but I don't need it for this particular unit. So there's a number 4,000 printed into the plastic right here that goes down. So this is facing down. Slide that on. So once I have these DIN plates laid onto there, I'm going to put the thing called the trim plate. And that will lock onto the DIN plate. So it's kind of locked on there now. This is how it's going to look in the car. And then, this is the piece I'm not using. I'm going to go for this one, which is called the kit frame. There are these two openings, and these should go on the bottom, where the two circles are, that goes on the bottom. Next I've gone ahead and, and popped on the thing they call the kit frame, which is this plastic piece that I just mounted onto the trim plate. I'm going to go for something called a support tray and mount that one in on the bottom. This one clips on as so. And right here it's going to kind of pinch the sides. So now that one's in. The last thing I need to do is put this mounting bracket on there. The instructions, they wanted to have me break off all the tabs except for the ones marked A. But I'm going to go ahead and try it without breaking any tabs first. See how that goes. So this goes on there and it's held on by these nuts and bolts. Got both of those nuts and bolts in. I got my wiring harness ready. Ready to go mount this on the car. So now I'm gonna go ahead and hook this thing up. I pushed it about as far back as it goes. Make sure everything's plugged in firmly. And like I mentioned earlier, it's gonna stick out a little bit. But should be more or less fine. Alright, so there it is. It's installed, as you can see, it's sticking out a little bit. It should be fine. Now I'm gonna go outside and 
go ahead and reconnect the battery and we're going to try it out shortly. And I'm going to go ahead and reconnect this black terminal right here. I'm going to use an 8 millimeter socket for that. And I need to be careful when I'm doing this. I don't accidentally bump into the red terminal or it's not going to go well because I'm going to be completing a circuit. And it could be dangerous. Okay, so that's now reconnected. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the car on and we're going to see what happens here. I'm going to leave it in neutral and it says cancel demo. Press volume knob. Yes, demo off. Stereo system. 